Welcome to Electron Online. In this example right here, we're going to show you how to solve a problem where we have two sources of sound and they come together to the single point, so there's going to be sound interference and how to find the change in the intensity depending upon whether or not there's one source or there are multiple sources. And there's a special technique we have to use here. And we'll show you an example here and several more examples after that so you get a good understanding of how to do sound interference in this particular case. So what we have here is we have two sound sources, one that puts out a power of 10 watts of sound and this one puts out 20 watts of sound and there's a point right here equidistance from both speakers where we want to find the intensity and the change in intensity when we only have one speaker on and then afterwards we turn both speakers on. Notice the difference, the distance between the speakers is 2 meters and the distance of the point here from the, the, the line here that connects the two speakers is also 2 meters so that the distance here would be the square root of 1 square plus 2 square which is equal to the square root of 5 meters for the distance from the point of interest to each of the two speakers. So the problem goes as follows. What is the difference in difference, and I'm missing a E right here, what is the difference in intensity if speaker, wow, I'm missing a lot of letters, if speaker one is turned on first and then speaker two is turned on also. And notice that the wavelength is one meter for both and that they are in phase. Now, some equations we need, the intensity from a source is equal to the power of the source divided by the area over which it spreads. So that's a very uh, important equation right here and also that the pressure, the maximum pressure of a sound wave is equal to the square root of two times the density of the air times the velocity of sound in the air times the intensity at that location. Of course the intensity can be calculated like that. It turns out the way you need to solve these problems is you need to first calculate the intensity of the sound at this location as uh, from the two sources. Then in order to add the two together we have to convert from intensity to pressure because in order to, to what we call do sound interference instead of adding intensities together we actually have to add pressures together. So we have to convert from intensity to pressure, add the two together and then reconvert back to intensity before we can calculate the difference in intensity in decibels. Alright, so what we need to do is first find the intensity at this location of the sound coming from this source, source 1, and of the sound coming from this source, source 2. How do we do that? Well, simple. Intensity from source 1 is equal to the power from source 1 divided by the distance, no, not the distance, divided by the area over which this spreads. So the power would be 10 watts and the area would be 4 pi times the distance and squared. So that would be, notice that sound spreads over a spherical shaped region as it goes out. So this would be equal to 10 watts divided by 4 times pi times the square root of 5 squared. Of course that's in meters, that would be meters squared. And that would of course be 5, so that gives us 10 watts divided by 5 times 4 which is 20 pi meters squared which is equal to 10 divided by 20, that would be 1 half, that would be 1 over 2 pi watts per square meter. All right, so that's the intensity caused by source 1 at that particular location. The intensity for source 2, I2, that would be equal to P2 divided by A, and again that would be now 20 watts divided by 4 pi times R2 squared, which is the same as R1 squared, so this is equal to 10 watts, divided by 4 pi times the square root of 5 squared meter squared which is equal to 20 watts divided by 20 pi meter squared which is equal to 1 over pi watts per meter squared. So now we have the intensities of both sources at that particular location. It makes sense since this one has twice the power of this one that it will have twice the intensity over here compared to that one. All right, now we want to convert that to the pressure, the maximum pressure at that location as of course the sound wave uh, travels by. Of course sound wave doesn't go like this, the sound wave. The sound wave of course is a longitudinal wave, not a transverse wave. All right, so now the maximum pressure for each. So P max is going to be equal to the square root of twice the density times the velocity times the intensity, and of course this is P max for the first source, times the intensity of the first source, so this would be equal to the square root of 2 times the density times velocity times the square root of 
1 over 2 pi, and I'll leave off the units. Now notice, we don't have to find the values for this, either though you know, the value of the density, of course, 1.29 uh, kilograms per square meter, velocity of sound and air is about 340 meters per second, but we don't need that because that's going to cancel out. So the pressure max for the second speaker is equal to the square root of 2 times the density, velocity times I2, so that would be equal to the square root of 2 rho v times the square root of, in this case that would be 1 over pi. So now that we have the pressure maximum for both the first source and the second source, what we can do is we can go ahead and add them together. So now we're going to sum them together. So P total is equal to P max from the one plus P max from the other source. Two. Go ahead, and when we add these two together, we can simply see that we have a common factor of the square root of two rho V. So that's the square root of two rho V. And then we add to that the term of the first one, which is 1 over 2 pi squared that plus the square root of 1 over pi. All right, so that gives us the total pressure. Now we can convert back to the intensity of the sum of the two. We know the intensity of the first source, but we don't know yet the intensity of both sources together because to get that, we need to add their pressures together. So to find the intensity, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this equation, solve it for i, square both sides, solve for i, we get i is equal to p max squared divided by 2 rho times v. All right, so to do that, we use this equation right here. So we can say that i, therefore, is equal to p max, which is this quantity squared, that would be the square root of 2 rho v times the square root of 1 over 2 pi plus the square root of 1 over pi quantity squared. So that's this quantity squared, and we have to divide that by, oop, of course make sure we square this part as well. We have to square this, and we have to square this, and we divide that by, uh, right here, 2 rho v. And of course, this will cancel out that, so this cancels out this. So we're left with i is equal to this quantity squared. So i is equal to the square root of 1 over 2 pi plus the square root of 1 over pi quantity squared. So that would be the intensity when the two sources together. All right, go ahead and let's square that. So at this point, it probably would be easier to just work these things out. So get some numerical value for this quantity right here. So I have 2 times pi, take the inverse of that, take the square root, so now I have this first quantity right here, so let's write that down. So it's equal to 0 0.3989 plus the next one, so we need plus two parentheses, we have 1 divided by pi, first parentheses, now we take that, we take the square root of that, so that would be... 0 0.5642, we have to square that, so now we write like that, and that's 3, 9, that's about right, and now we square that number, and we get 0 0.9276. Okay, so that would be the total intensity from the two sources put together, and of course that would be in terms of watts per square meter. All right, now let's compare that to the intensity of the first source alone. That would be 1 over 2 pi. So let's write that down. So we have 2 times pi. Take the inverse of that. So this here, let's go over here. This here is equal to 0 0.1592 watts per square meter. So we can now see that the intensity caused by the first source at this location is 0.1592 watts per square meter because we converted the intensity to pressure, then we added the two pressures together and reconverted back to intensity, we now have the intensity total of the two sources in terms of watts per, per square meter at that location. What is the ratio? What is the ratio increase? So the ratio of the two sources versus the one source is going to be equal to 
0 0.9276 divided by 0 0.1592. And when we take that ratio, so we have 0 0.9276 divided by 0 0.1592 equals, we get a ratio of 5.827. Okay, so that's the ratio of the intensities of the two sources come together versus the one source. Now we have to convert that to decibels. So the intensity difference, so the delta intensity in decibels, will be equal to 10 times the log of the ratio of 5.827. So let's take the log of that number and multiply that times 10, and we have a difference of... 7.65 decibels. So now we have the answer. The way we did the problem was we found the intensity at this location for each individual source. The intensity of the first source was 0.1592 watts per square meter. The intensity of the second source will be double that. But we can't just add the intensities, we have to add the pressures of the waves. So we calculate the maximum pressure for each wave we add those two together at that location, then we reconvert that back to the intensity, and the total intensity of the two together will be 0.9276, because of course we have constructive interference there. Therefore, then we convert that back into, not convert, but then we take the ratio of the intensity of both speakers divided by the intensity of the single speaker, we get this ratio, and then we convert that to decibels by taking 10 times the log of the ratio, and that gives us a difference of 7.65 decibels. So after we turn on the first speaker, and then we turn on the second speaker, the sound intensity will increase by 7.65 decibels. And that's how we do wave interference when it comes to sound. Examples I'm going to show you, we're going to do a problem where we, now, let me try again cases where we have sound interference examples I don't know what I'm saying I got to switch my brain switch brain particle physics sound particle physics sound okay here I am